What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Stochastic Channel. And today I'm talking preseason DFS ahead of Sunday, August the 21st. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you today by Prize Picks. And if you've never heard of Prize Picks, they're daily prop based offerings. There's no mass entries, there's no optimizers. You just make lineups of player props. You can make lineups with up to five players where you can 10 extra entry fee. And better yet, if you use the promo code AWESOME, you are going to get a match deposit bonus up to $100. So make sure to check out prize picks. All right, two slates today. We have a showdown for Philadelphia taking on Cleveland, and then we have a two game night slate. Instead of going position by position, we are going to dive into each slate individually. So that way, if you're here checking out the night slate, just fast forward a little bit and you can find that content. But if you're talking showdown, we're going to get to that now. And we have Philadelphia taking on Cleveland for showdown. The big focuses are always going to be defense and kickers. Luckily, we don't have kicker battles for either team. Philadelphia taking on Cleveland. It's Jake Elliott and Cade York. Those are locked in options. Defenses, as we saw last night with uh, Clevante Turpin in Dallas, they can be extremely high scoring options here as well. For the preseason here, Philadelphia is a slight favorite over Cleveland. So tentatively, they're expected to score a few more points, which will be the lean here. But ultimately, I'm going to be playing both defenses. At quarterback, Philadelphia, they have a few more options. No Jalen Hurts today, but Gardner Minshew, Reed Sinet, and Carson Strong are all healthy. Presumably, Carson Strong didn't play in week one, but I think that was just because they're looking at Sinet and Minshew. He could get out there today, which at least adds a little more uncertainty than we have on Cleveland, where we're not expected to see Watson or Brissett, leaving just Joshua Dobbs and Josh Rosen. Between the two, slight preference towards Dobbs because he played 29 snaps to Rosen 17. It's more condensed on the Cleveland side. To rank these guys, it would be Dobbs 1, followed by Reed Sinet 2, and then Josh Rosen 3. Looking at running back, it's a little more condensed on Cleveland as well. You have four healthy running backs and a fullback in Johnny Stanton, who surprisingly played 18 snaps and ran four routes, but not expected to see Chubb or Hunt. That means Dearness Johnson, Demetric Felton, Jerome Ford, and John Kelly will headline this group. Kelly played 29 snaps, ran 13 routes. Ford had the big game, 21 snaps for him, nine routes. I think both are fine, but Kelly's going to play a little bit more, giving him a little bit of an edge. And then on Cleveland, you have five backs. No Miles Sanders, but Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell, who both, both missed week one, have been practicing. So I'm expecting to see a little bit of them. Even with them on the field, though, Jason Huntley, Kennedy Brooks should play a lot. Jason Huntley played 41 snaps and saw 23 routes in their first preseason game. Brooks just 21 snaps, 13 routes. DeAndre Torrey also didn't play. He was just signed a couple days before. Huntley is awesome, and he might be the best overall running back play on the slate because of his pass catching. But overall, I'm interested in Huntley, Brooks, and then on the other side, Ford and Kelly. Receiver's a little hard to get to today. Cleveland is more condensed, so this is where I want to focus most of my attention in GPPs. Not expecting to see Cooper. David Bell has been dealing with an injury for a long time now, and Mike Woods is injured. That leaves just six healthy receivers. And the players to really focus on here are Mark, Mike, excuse me, Mike Harley, Jamarcus Bradley, and Javon Wims. Harley had a 55% route share in week one. Bradley had a 41% route share, and Wims had a 48% route share. I think you can look to some guys on Philadelphia. It's just going to be a little wider here. They'll have eight healthy receivers. If John Hightower misses time, that could condense it a little bit more. He's questionable for the game. But when you look at their route shares, I think the players you want to focus on are Lance Lenore, who had a 49% route share. Devon Allen, he might be a GPP play, but Deion Kane is really the guy that played the most. 60% route share for Deion Kane, 40 snaps, 27 routes. I think maybe Jalen Rager is a GPP play too. He had a 42% route share. And for showdowns, I'm typically not playing tight ends unless something's really condensed. Philadelphia is going to have three. Cleveland's also going to have three. None of them really stand out. It was about 33% route share or less for every Cleveland tight end. And the same is, exact, is exactly true for Philadelphia. Noah Togai, 33% route share. No one was higher than that. So not really getting to those players. But I think that's enough for showdown. Let's get to the two-gamer at night where we have Cincinnati, New York, Baltimore, and Arizona. We're actually playing legit lineups here. So the quarterback position... Cincinnati is going to have three out there. Brandon Allen, assuming he's healthy from the concussion. Jake Browning and Drew Plitt. New York Giants also three. Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, Davis Webb, assuming Daniel Jones plays a fair amount. The two situations we really want to hone in on, 
Baltimore and Arizona. No Lamar Jackson tonight. So you have Tyler Huntley and Anthony Brown. I think both of these players are more than serviceable because of their mobility. Tyler Huntley played 30, 35 snaps in week one. Brown played 28. They're both awesome plays. They both run very well. On the Arizona side, you have Trace McSorley and Jarek Garantano. We're not expected to see Kyler Murray or Colt McCoy. Trace McSorley is very mobile. He's a player we can certainly look at tonight. And right now, he's slightly behind the Baltimore signal callers just because Baltimore is a six-point favorite in the game. But for tournaments, McSorley has essentially the same upside with his legs. So I'm definitely going to be playing McSorley. At running back, Baltimore has five, and then Arizona has five. So this is tough. Darrell Williams, he could make his debut tonight after he did not play in their first preseason game. But they do have five healthy backs in Arizona, but it's more like four because TJ Pledger just played four snaps. So the players I'm highlighting here are going to be Eno Benjamin, Jonathan Ward, and Keontae Ingram. And I think there's a slight edge by playing Jonathan Ward and Keontae Ingram. Ward in particular, 26 snaps, 18 routes. That led the team. He had a lot of opportunity. On the Baltimore side, Mike Davis got banged up in practice. So we're really looking at Justice Hill, Tyler Beatty, and Nate McCrary. Ben Mason and Patrick Ricard are fullbacks. Ben Mason did run eight routes for what it's worth. He's a good pass catcher. But Tyler Beatty, 20 snaps, 11 routes. Not as involved as some of the backs we just talked about in Arizona, but he has an awesome pass catching skill set. Caught off over 50 balls in his final season with Missouri. He's a player we should be looking at too. At wide receiver, Baltimore is going to have upwards of 10 receivers, assuming we see a little bit of Devin Duvernay and Rashad Bateman. That's not a guarantee. Duvernay was battling an injury, as was Bateman early in camp. If they miss time, we could be looking at a pretty condensed opportunity share for some of these players. Mikai Polk had a 69% route share in their first preseason game. And then just behind him, you would rally Webb 48%, followed by Shamar Bridges at 43%. Bridges is a guy that's gotten a ton of hype. He's allegedly battling Jalen Moore for a roster spot, and he's played well enough to potentially earn one. So Shamar Bridges and Jalen Moore are two GPP plays for this team. Then on the Arizona side, this is where we can really find some good options. So many injuries, so many veterans not expected to play. We're not expected to see DeAndre Hopkins, Marquise Brown, A.J. Green, Rondell Moore, Antoine Wesley, or Andre Pacellia, leaving just six healthy receivers Maybe one of them surprisingly plays and you get to seven. So it's still very attractive. Andy Isabella, 88% route share. That's awesome. Greg Dorch, 62% route share. Marcel Aitman, 53% route share. These should be three players we are heavily focused on today, especially considering Bocelli is vacating some time and snaps from their previous game. At tight end, you have six healthy players for Arizona. That is very tough to see. The only guy I'll mention is Trey McBride missed week one of the preseason, but he'll be out there today. And the coaching staff has been very vocal about seeing what they have in McBride. So I think he is interesting, but Baltimore is far more condensed. Only three players here, Josh Oliver, Isaiah Likely, Tony Poljan. Likely at the big game, but his route share was stuck at 40%. Josh Oliver actually had a 48% route share. The way you shake this out, I think you could play either of these guys, but it'll be a slight preference towards Josh Oliver for me. Very slight, love likely will be playing him a little bit as well with some Trey McBride mixed in. Again, for defenses tonight, we're splitting hairs here, but ultimately you have the Baltimore Ravens as the biggest favorite on the slate. New York Giants are a little bit behind them. Those are the top two. Cincinnati and Baltimore are pretty considerable underdogs on the slate. So I think you can play them in tournaments, but if you're just trying to essentially pick one or two, I would focus on New York or Arizona. But That'll do it for us today. My name is Matt Kajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Kajeski. Let me know in the comment section who you like tonight, and I'll make sure to get back to you. Until then, we will see you next time.